Maribel Howe is also an embodiment of the Charleston style. How could she not be? The house she lives in with its masterpieces of furniture, its sweeping staircases and high coffered ceilings is a museum of a vanished way of life for the awestruck tourists who visit it. I'm Maribel Howe. But this is also Maribel's home even if the tourists' admission fees do help with expenses. She occupies this home with an authority that helps to explain why Charleston looks the way it does today. Because while Charlestonians are Americans, and certainly they are South Carolinians, sometimes it does seem as if they're Charlestonians first. Being convinced that they are right and not having to impress anybody they don't have to impress anybody because they already think that what they do is what should be done. All right, where else do you find a peninsula city that doesn't have any hot dog stands or any high rises in it? And I think that's sort of like the history of Charleston. Other people in South Carolina decide to reform it or change it or uh, monkey with it in any way and nothing ever comes of it. It's just a little, little one night stand and then Charleston goes back to being Charleston again. With exquisite arrogance and in utter defiance of the laws of nature, Charlestonians even claim special powers for their Ashley and Cooper rivers. Well, if you stand here and you see the Ashley there and the Cooper there, and you know that the A Atlantic Ocean is straight ahead, it's not a joke. You know, it's absolutely true that in Charleston, the Ashley and the Cooper Rivers come together to form the Atlantic Ocean. And if you look straight ahead at that sort of blob in the middle, that is Fort Sumter, where the late unpleasantness began. <laughs> 